Good evening, folks. Just been to the gym. Good workout. No, not too bad at all. Indeed, yes. But I'm going to do two videos here. <laughs> I'm going to split them up. So, there you go. First video. Um, right. It's quite likely the pastor is telling the people at the church that I don't like him and that I'm against him. I'm trying to turn people against him. That sort of stuff, right? Well, I say it's possible, not not a certainty. But let's just assume that's the case for a second, okay? For this video's sake. Okay. If I was going to try and turn people against him, I would then put up his record. Right? What, has he been in charge of the church for about nine years? Okay. You've still got a lot of people um, praying, asking God to do things that God's already done. They haven't learned about healing. They haven't learned about any of that sort of stuff, have they? No. Um, that's not good. Um, he's full of fear. You know, when he took my name off the cleaning master, I asked him why, and all I heard was fear, 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 fear. Right? When I asked him about why or whether or not they were bringing things back to um, the church with regards to Bible study, prayer meeting. Again, the answer was fear, 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 fear. Not faith. In that answer, including the answer to um, why the cleaning motor, no mention of God. No mention of God, just fear. Just fear. I could also mention the fact, I could have prayed about that, I could have prayed about the fact that the pastor said he was pleased that a woman that was a problem for him in the church left the church and now potentially doesn't have a church. Yeah. Or she's in a church now that can't help her. But he was pleased that that, that woman's gone. Yeah. He classes himself as a pastor, and yet he doesn't have a pastoral heart, does he? He's a teacher, he's not a pastor. So maybe that woman who left the church, who was a bit of a problem for him, maybe what she needed was a pastor. What she got was a teacher. I can mention the arrogance of the fact that he says this is a teaching church, that he's a teacher, when we're supposed to be taught by the Holy Spirit. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, and if, if he was a teacher, he would know that. Wouldn't he, really? He would know that the job of the Holy Spirit is to help us through the Word of God. To help us to understand it, to open it up for us. Yeah, because who would know it better than God, right? Well, apparently he knows it better than God. I could have prayed all of that, couldn't I? <laughs> I could have come forward in a Sunday meeting and said all of that, couldn't I? Well, I'll okay, you know, he would try and say that he would get the mic off me. Really? Really? No chance. Not if I wanted to keep it. He's a little man. Well, I mean, I'm a bit taller than him, but I'm certainly a damn sight stronger than he is. Damn sight stronger than he is. So, <laughs> if I wanted to make him look small, I could have done that so easily. There was never an attempt to make him look small. Even COVID, you know, he led this church to obey who? To obey who? Who was the church obeying by knocking down? Folks, come on, who was the church obeying? Obeying the government? Well, who's leading the government? Who was the one spreading fear? Who's the one who spreads fear, the spirit of fear? Who does that come from? Come on, the devil, right? So if the devil is leading the governments and the governments tell the church to knock down, who are the church obeying when they're knocked down? Uh -huh. On his watch, his people are praying to hospitals and doctors. He is leading his people, praying to hospitals and doctors. Not to God. Right? Now, anyone who is a child of God any son or daughter of God who took their relationship with God seriously would be incredibly concerned with all that. 
We're being incredibly concerned with all that. Well, anyone who is a child of God, who has a relationship with God, who wants a relationship with God, certainly, they wouldn't think that that was a serious crime against God. You have brought the world right into God's church. You have a church called the Elgin Community Church of God. And you have brought the devil right in to that church. Why would I say the devil? Well, COVID being one, you know, locking down the church when the devil says, the world system is run by who? Who is the ruler of the world? The devil. So doctors, nurses, hospitals. Right? Is that part of the world or is that part of God? If you want to go back to the original creation of hospitals, then you would say part of God. If you want to go back to the way it is now, then you have to say the world. Right? They're in the world. They're part of the world system. They're part of the UK's NHS. Right? National Health Service of the UK. Right? The world. You are preaching the world to your church. You are preaching about going to the world to your church. That's what you're doing. So, if I wanted to tear you down, that's what I'd do. That's what I'd use. All of that. But do I want to tear you down? No. The reason why I don't want to tear you down Listen to the song. In the description of this video, there's a song called Relate. Listen to it. I don't know what it's like being you. You don't know what it's like being me. But maybe we're the same, just in different ways. Have I ever, ever dismissed your ministry completely as being not of God in any way, shape or form? No. Do I believe the way you're trained is of God? No. Do I believe the way you do things with regards to preparing it is of God? No. Not in any way, shape or form. Do I believe that you have a heart for God? I can't say you don't. The problem is I can't say you do. The reason why I can't say you do is because you're a teacher. And so far, I was in your room, I was in your office, and I said, I've seen the hearts of some of the people in this church. The one heart I've not seen is yours. So can I say you have a heart for God? No. Because the reality is, what I see is you have a heart for your ministry. That's what I see. I can only really say what I see. However, can I say that you don't have a heart for God? No. I can say that I think it's been damaged. I think you've been hurt, and I think you hide it. And I think you hide it pretty well. I think you hide it behind this veneer of your ministry. Am I wrong? Possibly. Maybe. Has God told me that? No. God hasn't told me that, but if you do have a heart, you've hidden it bloody well. That's the reality. And by the way, yeah, you know, I swear. I do, I don't care. The reason why I don't care is because I'm not churchy. Never have been churchy. Never cared less about churchiness. Not in any way, shape or form. I don't care less about the way that the church is all about the knowledge of good and evil and is judging people based upon that. I don't care. All that stuff doesn't bother me. It never has done. Yeah, what bothers me is God. And things like swearing, when God's ready to deal with that, he will. Do I swear all the time? No. But do I swear when it's something that is incredibly passionate to me? The subject... And when I get a bit more emotional, when my emotion takes a bit more of a control, yeah, am I bothered by it? Not particularly. I understand it. So I'm not going to be bothered by that, right? Simple as that. Look, I wish them all well in that church. I really do. If God still wants me to go there, then he's going to make that happen. If God wants me to be a blessing to that church, and I will do. If God wants me to be involved in some way with, you know, you know, helping people to mature, then I will do. If God wants me to do that. And if God has to move people out of the way to make that happen, then he's going to do that. I don't know. 
I don't know what God wants. It's not my concern, it's his concern. Simple as that. It is. It's now over a day since that prayer happened. That the pastor basically told me to F off and don't come back to his church. Right? Because of. Now, am I at a stage yet where God has said that it was me, it was me and I was out of order praying that? No. No. If I was out of order, God would have told me by now. Why? Because it's bloody important to me. Yeah? I had the vision and the dream 20 odd years ago. The church is incredibly important to me. You know, stopping Christians from going or being you know, pulled away from God is one of my, one of the things in my heart. One of the things that, yeah, I'm sorry, that's important to me. And when I see any leader, any leader that's making people soft, oh, that drives me bloody mad. I hate it. I do, I hate it. Yeah. I hate what they do. I don't hate the people, but I hate what they do. Yeah. No point in hating the people. What's the point in that? People are where they are. That's the reality. You know, eight weeks ago, I was where I was. Now, one thing I will say in this video, remarkably, my head is more awake now than it normally is when I do these videos. Normally, I'm struggling with words right now. I'm fluid, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm wide awake, which I normally am not. Look, the people in the church need to come from babies to sort of teenage to grow into maturity. The problem is they've been stunted. They've been stunted for a long, long time. They need to come to maturity. We need to come to understanding of what is the purpose of them giving their life to God? What is the purpose of the Word of God? What's the purpose of us still being here? The problem is, teacher, you're not doing a very good job of teaching any of that, are you, really? Yeah? Again, that's not your fault. Your training didn't equip you with that. Your training didn't equip you with that. Other people's training has equipped them to do that. And I'm not saying me. It may very well be me, but I'm not going to say me. It's not my job to say me, is it? Not in any way, shape or form. It's my job to say, no. Don't look at me for that. There's so many reasons why you shouldn't look at me for that. I'm not a pastor. I have no interest in being a pastor, not in any way, shape or form. No, nope. not at all. I wouldn't do it. I'm not a church manager. I'm not going to manage the accounts or the admin or anything like that. Not interested. I'm not going to manage the events of the church. No, nope. don't care. I'm not going to do it. No, nope. couldn't care less. If at some point in time God gives me a church to sort of, you know, to lead or guide, I will simply be doing what God is telling me to do. All the rest of it is the job of the people in the church, and my job is to get them to do that. My job is to get them to understand that there's a, that there's a contract between us. I do my part. They do their part. Simple. My job also is to first help people to understand that they need to learn. Part of that is to teach them that they don't know. You know, they are way behind where they should be. Therefore, we're going to bring them up to the point of learning. And the first point of learning is you need to learn. There is stuff that you need to learn because it's going to help you on your walk. Without that knowledge, you can't thrive. Simple. Am I going to be an expert in that? Nope. Not in any way, shape or form. One thing, I'm going to be led and guided by God. I'm not going to be led and guided by you know, some blinking college. I'm not going to have a piece of paper that's unqualified. 
not in any way, shape or form, that ain't going to happen, no. No, not at all. That is just not going to happen. At all. See, I don't care. I'm not interested in people looking at me saying, Oh, Pastor, aren't you wonderful? I'm not, I'm not the young Peter. I would always hope to be the older Peter. The Peter that says, the Lord is wonderful. I'm not. The older Peter was the one who recognised that he had denied the Lord three times. Yes, he'd been healed by the Lord for each occasion. But he still knew that had happened. He wasn't that cocky, young follower of Yeshua. He was now the older, wiser one who knew who he was. He knew he was a sinner. He knew what he was capable of. He had said that he would die for the Lord. And yet, no, he lied. He denied the Lord three times to save his own life. The Peter we see afterwards is a more mature Peter. Is a Peter who understands that sometimes it's wise to keep your hand down. Sometimes it's wise to not have people look at you and think you're all it. Sometimes it's wise to stay in the boat. Not because you can't walk on water when the Lord says come. Nope. But because maybe on this occasion it should be John or Luke who steps out of the boat. Maybe they should be the one who have the chance to put their hand up. You see, the older pe Peter understands that. The younger one didn't. The younger one said to the Lord, can we sit at your right hand side? And the Lord said, excuse me, what else do you think you are? <laughs> Asking that question. Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? <laughs> the older Peter, would he have asked that? No. Because he knew. He knew. At one point, he thought he was worthy to ask that question. As he got older, he realised he wasn't worthy, didn't he? You know? For me, I want to be the older Peter. And I say, I mean, I know what my job is now. I thought my job was to fix the church. Well, it is and it isn't. It's not by the way I thought it was. Yeah, it may still be a case of you know, doing things the way that God is now telling me how to do things will fix the church. Maybe it will. But by pointing to Father, maybe that's what's going to fix the church. Maybe. But that's my job. My job is to point to Father, it's not to point to me. Father, I pray you'll bless Manuel. I pray you'll bless him. Lord, I, I've, I've got no idea what his future is. No, no more than I have any idea what my future is. No idea at all. I know that he's got an incredible amount of knowledge, incredible amount of understanding, of which can be very, very useful to you. Certainly can be incredibly useful to those people that are young, in faith and young in age as Christians, who could really benefit from that level of teaching, that level of enthusiasm that he has for teaching.
You know what? I have no interest in in going back to that church. If you don't want me there, Lord, there's no way, shape or form I want to set foot in that church again. Why? If you don't want me there, that's the point. Why would I want to be there? I want to be where you want me to be, Lord. So, certainly I've got no interest at all, Father, at all. Not in any way, shape or form. I'm trying to compete with this man. I'm trying to cause him problems. I'm trying to do anything other than, yeah, would I want to challenge him? Would I want to you know, help him to come to a better understanding of you? First of all, would I, help, would I want him to come to an understanding that although he has an incredible understanding, there's so much he still doesn't know. There really is. There's so much that his tutorage in the past did not teach him. There's so much about you, Father, that he doesn't know. There's so much about the, the point of us being here that he doesn't know. Because there's so much that the Bible just doesn't say. Although actually, I think most of it is in there. Yeah. Like when it talks about the fact that all creation is longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Or does it say children of God? Same difference. Sons and daughters, children, same thing. That's the point. It doesn't say that creation is longing for the revealing of the church. It doesn't say for Christians. It says for the sons and daughters of God. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth and the knife. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm the way. The way to what? The Father. No one comes to who? The Father. So what's the point? What's the whole purpose of it all? Coming to the Father. That's the whole purpose. Relationship with Father. That's what it's all about. Is relationship with Father. So say it's all in you. Yeah. You know, John seventeen talks about um, that you were in the world and of the world, but now you're not of the world. You're still in the world, but not of it. And it talks about the fact that the Lord says, I want them to be as one as we are one. Now in that, wow, that is beautiful. I want them to be as one as we are one. So look at that point of view. Why do we need to be as one? We need to be as one because we're in the world, we're not of it. If we're not of it, then we're now in a foreign world run by the enemy, right? This is not our kingdom anymore. And if we're alone, we have no chance at all of thriving. Not any chance at all. Surviving may be, thriving, no chance at all. Also, the Lord says that they be, that may they be as one as we are one. So, unfortunately, teacher, you said, and it probably came from your College your stuff. The you said at some point in time, a few weeks ago, you said Father God never comes down. Right? Yeah. What is that there? Is that a cat or something? Or is that an owl? Some sort of bird. Hello, bird. How are you? Hello. Is that an owl? I think that's an owl. Cool. God bless you. God bless you, little birdie. Yeah, an owl. You have a good night. Catch some mice, okay? There you go. You take care. Flew off. As soon as I said catch some mice, off it went. Just stood there watching me. Cool. That's the part of creation. That's a part of creation, including these trees, including all the flowers, including the hedges, 
All the insects that are longingly waiting for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. Wow. And when we start living, walking as we should be, we're going to start to see a change in creation. We're going to start to see flowers become so much more beautiful. Trees will become so much more beautiful than they are because they will receive what we have. At the moment, what have they been receiving? Death. Because what do we have? Death. Yeah. Got how many people walking this way now? Okay, three people coming. I'm going to go over this way a bit more and then we'll, I will come back again. It's nice to see the elm. Very, very nice indeed. Anyway, what's the saying? Um, bum, 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 bum. Lord, remind me, please. Before I saw the owl, that really threw me. <laughs> Beautiful owl, just stand, just stand there, watching me. Gorgeous. God bless you, owl. Right. Maybe I found a mouse down there. Maybe it thought I was trying to compete with his mouth. No, as I say, yeah, about the, um, certainly about the pastor. Do I want to compete with him? No, 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 no. Got no interest. And I say, yeah, with regards to the church, whatever involvement God wants me to have in the church is what I want to have, no more. No more, no less, not interested. I've got too many things, too many important things to focus on right now. You know, I really have. Yeah, I'm on this new walk now, trying to understand how to walk as a son of God. Yeah, I'm not a Christian anymore, I'm a son of God. So therefore I'm trying to walk as that. And that's, uh, you know, going back to being an infant, you know, having to learn to walk again is just weird. So, yeah. I know, last night, that's the point, that prayer, that was God. That was what God wanted. Yeah, was God speaking through me? To a certain degree, yeah. To a certain degree, yeah. I say, it was the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah. And while it's going on, while it's happening, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. Well, because in me, I felt there was... Love, there was incredible frustration. There was a tinge of righteous anger in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose the, the similar thing. Yeah. Anyway, no, don't worry about that. Mine was going to something else. I'm not going to share that information. Don't worry. No, I probably have shared it before anyway, so don't worry. Um, yeah. In the end, folks, the reality is, is that we're all in a position where we need to learn. We're all in a position where we need to grow. We're all at different levels, yes. But none of us are there. None of us are exactly where we need to be. Well, okay. We are, to a certain degree, where we need to be. We're when, where we need to be right now. We're not necessarily where we need to be at our finishing point. But we are all where we need to be right now. And that's the thing, that's why we can't judge people because, generally speaking, people are exactly where they need to be. If they are God's people, 
God's children, he has them exactly where they need to be. Not where they're going to finish, but where they need to be right now. That's the reality. So we can't have a go at people, we can't judge them for where they are. You know, I, I did that walk with Stuart, and God helped me to understand during that walk that I've, I've always been on the right path. It didn't always look like it, but I was always on the right path. I was always on the path that God wanted me to be on. Always. Now, if that's the case for me, that's the case of everyone else, really. It is. Certainly everyone else in church, you have to say. It's going to have to be the case for them, or at least I have to assume that's the case for them. I don't know, really. Until it's absolutely obvious it isn't. Yeah? Either that, or I have to assume that God doesn't know what he's doing. So that's why it's a case where I don't judge anyone. Because you can't judge people if they're on the path that they need to be on. No matter where they are. Yeah. They are where they are. Yeah, I was. Six, what, what, eight weeks ago? I was in a completely different place to where I am now. Completely different. In that eight weeks, Jesus, I've travelled such a distance in eight weeks. It's just remarkable. But it's God, it's not me. No, 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 no. It definitely isn't me. God's the one who's done it. He's helped me massively, massively to move. Now, part of that has been, like, as I say, with, with Peter, Peter was broken to go from one bit to another. Jesus, that week. <laughs> Deflated. Then worst fear number two, then worst fear number three. Oh! <laughs> broken, mended, broken, mended, broken, mended. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and it started with worst fear number one. So broken, took a while to mend from that one. But yeah. <laughs> but you see, God did all that as a blessing. It seemed like a curse at the time, but it was always a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get tired. Why? I had a good workout at the gym. Very good. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been doing um, less this week, I think. Well, because Monday I was completely bloody shattered. So, yeah, I've been doing so much less. Well, that week, that hard week that I've just mentioned, that took its toll, but it took about a week to catch up with me. And Monday, it just, boom, it just caught up with me massively. So it's like, right, okay. I took it easier with regards to the gym stuff. Um, I did a bit of um, lower chest and flat chest, um, as in middle part chest. Um, the other day, I did arms yesterday, so I did a bit more arms today. I did shoulders before, so that's cool. Don't need to do any of those. So I did upper back. What I hadn't done was upper chest, so I thought I'd do upper chest today. Still a bit of arms, but uh, two sets of 20k dumbbells for upper arms, that's cool. I think next week I'm going to move on to probably 22.5k for arms. Well, dumbbells it is, so 45k in weight in total, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I started with two sets of 46k. 10 reps each set, and two sets of 50, and two sets of, no, sorry, three sets of 59k, then another two sets of 50, 10 reps all the way along, and then was it two sets or one set of 46 again? I'm not sure. One of them. Yeah. Don't know which one, but one of them. It was <laughs> two sets of one set. It was getting towards the time of you know, shutting down the gym. Yeah, you know, it shuts at eleven, and it was about five minutes to eleven, and I was the only one left. So I thought, well, I should probably 
to try and go. Plus, I was knackered by that point. <laughs> Absolutely shattered. Well, I mean, when it was uh, when I was doing what the 59. So the second set of 59, where the time you get to eight, you really are struggling to get the last two out. And then you do the third set of it. I, I sort of planned after one set to do three. I thought, okay, do three, because if I'm doing basically four sets of the other two anyway, just do three sets of this one, really. Did basically uh, 10 or 11 sets in total. It depends on whether I did two sets or one set of the 46 at the last one. Done. Um, but yeah, after that, every time I did a set, the last two or three reps were so tough. <laughs> yeah, you just basically you're trying to get both arms. Up. Oh, of course, I was doing the inside of the upper chest, not the outside. So it wasn't wide, it was inner. Basically, hands pushed inwards to the center uh, with the uh, cable crossover and then push up push forward. Uh, that was on a bench, probably about number three click to do the upper chest. Aye, that's cool. So yeah, yeah, so of course the last two reps are basically you push the left arm up, uh, get that one up and then bit by bit get the right up. <laughs> but they're the ones that are basically you're gonna have the brain send a message to the muscles saying you need to grow. Yeah. And of course, the purpose of growing is it, uh, yeah. Is it, if it is God behind this uh, wifey idea, then yeah, it's important that she has a husband that has the right sort of body for the wedding night, maybe. Yeah. For her, just make the effort. I mean, also, if I'm coming over the threshold, you know, I need to develop strength in areas that I wouldn't necessarily have had beforehand, so yeah, it's all good. There's somebody there, so I'm going to leave you to it now. So you take care, God bless, I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.